people are still after a 95% drop still people are still selling hacks at a hundred fold returns uh, <laughs> it's the best thing since sliced bread I try and look at things from a perspective of how are you going to help the human beings mm -hmm. and I hate scams and I do more to prevent people from getting scammed than the SEC does. So any of you guys from the SEC are listening, I hope you are. I want you to know in the deepest, deepest parts of heart that I've saved a lot more people from being wrecked than you have. Like Hex, Hex is the strongest. It launched totally sufficiently decentralized. It has had forever many multiple front ends. It has no building. It has nobody working for it. It, it makes you no promises whatsoever. Everyone says Bitcoin's not a security. Sweet. So like we just win on like every single possible front. And I'll just list you some of the things that everyone's got wrecked on. There's all these people that have tried to copy hex that you've probably never heard about because I wasn't so stupid to tell you about them so that you could wreck yourself. And their coins have all failed or nearly failed. So, uh, Hex 2T, which then changed its name to Axion, which then, was that the one that Rug pulled on launch? I think it Rug pulled on launch. And then there was Rex, which had an inflation bug and minted infinite coins. And then there was like Rex 2 and then Rex 3. And then there was like Hex, Hex Money, where some like, <laughs> dude who's gonna make some gambling thing. Every single one of these things has destroyed so many people. And I feel great because I did everything I could to save people. And then people that, you know, bought hacks, gained a following and then sold their hacks. Like, like the wise guy, emergency end stake, like 300 million hacks, sold it all, murdered the price and then screwed everyone with a horrible project. That's the worst price chart I've ever seen. And then, uh, you know, you never hear from them again. They just disappear. They scam and leave. And then the people that get scammed, the, the sad part is they lose all their money and they hurt the hex price chart. And you're like, wow, good job. You screwed everyone else and yourself at the same time to enrich a scumbag trader. And even after a 95% drop, I see people selling a hundred X gains, literally, but without <laughs> even looking at the staking, like just, just looking at the value of the coins. Cause you can go on ether scan. And you can, uh, you can see when they bought their coins and you can click the dollar value of the coins and it shows you the past value or the current value. Now the current value is accurate. The past value, it just pulls one value for that whole day. So who knows when, where in the range it was that day, but it's a really good estimate. And so I, I was watching some guy that was murdering the price. Um, he's nearly out of coins now. He had like 200 million. I think he's got like 30 or 20 million left. And, uh, you know, you could sell, he was selling a hundred X return even after a 95% drop. That's amazing price performance. Whereas all these other coins you look and you're like, yep, no one got out of life. Just everyone's doomed. I invented this thing called the risk diode to save people. And so when I tell you about a project, if you're already getting screwed by it, you know, which project I'm telling you about, but if you're not getting screwed by it yet, you're not going to hear a link from me to go and get yourself screwed. Um, I'm very proud of that. And it's something I invented and, and it's something that, uh, anyone warning anyone about anything should try and use if they can, because people are stupid. Someone did a price chart analysis and I never followed up on it to check it, but they like charted like the launch of every one of these horrible coins that targeted hexagons, Axion wise, uh, newer ones those ones are already like so deceased i don't mind mentioning them but these newer ones aren't deceased enough yet for me to well they kind of that's the thing like how dead is dead you know so one of the, one of these new coins that i don't want to talk about is proof of denial of service it literally just spams every network against lunchtime to so make everyone else's gas fees higher what an efficient way to distribute a new currency give it away for free to everyone so that there's permanent sell pressure <laughs> and no buy pressure. <sighs> I try so hard to save these people, man. I really try. And I saved a lot of people, but like, you know, 
we'll, we'll get the gas fees down. We'll, we'll, we'll help reduce Ethereum's gas fees by removing their users. Um, so if you like lower gas fees, that'll be nice. If you like the world's largest free airdrop, that's going to be nice. I, I think it's going to be wonderful. But you don't follow people. Like, let me put it to you this way. My gut feeling is that Maddie doesn't like when people scumbag up and demonize hacks to sell their crap coin that then wrecks everybody. And we've seen this 10 times now. So I'm, I don't care how hardcore hex can you are. If I see you show something that I think people are going to get wrecked on, I'm unfollowing you. And I've got really good hexagons that do a really good job spreading the word about how good Hex is and how cool I am. And they still said something nice about a bad coin. I'm like, oh, unfollow. It's it's not personal. But if you promote something that, uh, look, I don't even follow Vitalik. I don't follow Vitalik. I don't, I don't follow, I only follow Richard Hart Maximus because I think it's the path of least wreckedness, in my opinion. We have no shortage of real scams in crypto. Please go get them. When you, when you screw over everyone that has performed the good and honest behavior of trying to have privacy, which is protected in the constitution and in other places, privacy is good. It's why we have blinds. It's why we have door locks. It's why we have clothing. And it's, it's why you don't hand out your email password and your search history to people. You just don't because privacy is good and wholesome and healthy. And it's why we've got blinds on our windows. And so the good, honest people that wanted to maintain their privacy in the digital world, the same way they would have had it on the analog world, you know, you go, you go to pay, uh, with a credit card at a store, they can't tell how much money is in your bank account. You write a check. They can't tell how much money is in your bank account. You hand them cash. They can't tell how much money is in your bank account. You pay crypto. Uh Oh, <laughs> they know exactly how much money is in your bank account. We need mixing in order to have capitalism. We need mixing in order to have privacy. We need mixing in order to run companies in the digital future, period. You can't have all your suppliers knowing what you pay your other suppliers. You can't have all your competitors knowing who all your customers are. You can't have all your employees knowing that all of your other employees are being paid. And in crypto, this is like, Hex is the silliest thing to ever screw with because it's the least security thing in the whole game. <laughs> I die, Hex.com goes offline. You go to backuphex.com, hardhex.xyz, apphex.win, uh, staker.app, etherscam.io, write contract. And this is what this is what actual decentralization looks like. These are entirely yeah. different code bases run by entirely different people on entirely different infrastructure that have no relationship to each other. I don't even know about half of them. So you you can't get it can't get more decentralized. And by the way, as far as decentralization goes. We're not even on any big exchanges. <laughs> All of the trading is decentralized. So, so even if, so, so you can't, it is nonsensical to attack Hex from a critical managerial entrepreneurial effort thing. It doesn't make any sense. There's no building, there's no people, there's no nothing. It's just code, it sits there. And it would just sit there dead and dormant, except people run it themselves. They decide to do their own work and run the code themselves. That's effort of themselves. It's just like drawing a picture of a pony. Hey, I drew a picture of a pony. Used to be just pencil and paper. Drew a pony picture. Now I have one. Is it a security? No, <laughs> I drew it. And then when you mine your own coins, what's the difference? Tell me the difference between you mining your own coins and drawing a pony picture. Like Hex, Hex is the strongest. It launched totally sufficiently decentralized. It has had forever many multiple front ends. It has no building. It has nobody working for it. It, it makes you no promises whatsoever. What, what do you want? <laughs> it's drawn pony pictures, except you're minting quote coins, which are just ledger entries. So I just, I don't know how one would try to successfully attack it because I don't know what leg of the Howie test you try and say, I mean, so you don't have a common pool. You don't have, uh, managerial entrepreneurial effort. You don't have expectation of profit from the work of others. What's left? I mean, that's, that's like every possible thing. Oh, okay. Let, let's go family likeness test. What's it most similar to Bitcoin, except instead of blowing up the environment to make coins, you just, uh, 
lock your coins up for a while. You can lock them up for a day. Everyone says Bitcoin's not a security. Sweet. <laughs> so like we just win on like every single possible front. I try and look at things from a perspective of how are you going to help the human beings? Mm -hmm. And I hate scams and I do more to prevent people from getting scammed than the SEC does. So any of you guys from the SEC are listening, I hope you are. I want you to know from the deepest, deepest parts of heart that I've saved a lot more people from being wrecked than you have. Because I did everything I could to prevent people from putting their money into BlockFi. Did you? I did everything I could to prevent people from putting their money into Celsius. Did you? I did everything I could to put people in charge of their own keys and get them to have self-custody. Did you do that? I called the top on the day. Did you? What have you done? So I break my balls to save people. I'm warning people about bad dApps, fake airdrops, showing people constantly every single hack that happens, right? I hand out free coins out the yin yang. I created free coins, give them to Bitcoin coolers. Now I'm creating free coins, giving them to Ethereum and every single ERC20 holder. I'm the giving tree of crypto. I raised 27 million for charity. You know what the SEC did? The SEC uh, got paid $50 million by BlockFi pursuing them. And guess where the $50 million came from? It came right mm. out of the money that would have been used to pay people now that they're bankrupt. That sounds like the opposite of helping people. That sounds like hurting people to me. And, th and then here, like I just, <laughs> I try to make the world a better place for people. And I, I just wish the SEC would use its power to screw up all the obviously evil horrible things that are going on instead of attacking the good people. People are still, after a 95% drop, still people are still selling hacks at 100-fold returns. Uh, it's the best thing since sliced bread. It's perfect, <laughs> flawless operation for years. Why everything else has gotten wrecked. Gemini Exchange, Bit License in New York, registered out the yin-yang. Their users lost a billion dollars. <laughs> <laughs>